Hello friends, welcome to Improve 10x. Today we are going to discuss about encapsulation. It is not just about uh, combining variables and methods. There is a lot more than that. Let's discuss it in deep. So, usually when we actually think of encapsulation, we think of a capsule. What do we have inside the capsule? Just some medicine. Even in uh, object-oriented programming also, we assume the same thing. We take everything as an object. And what do you mean by an object? It is a combination of properties and behavior. Properties is something that will actually store data and it can have a state. Behavior is something where we can actually perform some action. What is the relation between these properties and behavior and encapsulation? If we are grouping all the related properties and behavior into a single entity, that entity will look something like this. You have properties and you have behavior and finally it looks like a capsule and that's the reason they started the term encapsulation. So the, the main concept here is not just adding properties and behavior, it is more of grouping related properties and behavior. If you are grouping related items, then it becomes like a single entity which has very less dependency with the outside world. At the same time, it also helps you in making the object more secure and safe. As we discussed, there is a capsule where we are combining properties and behavior and this capsule is actually called as a class. This is a common example which like many people give. But is it just only class? Do we have anything else apart from class? If you combine properties and behavior, we are getting a class and these are related items. Similarly, if we group related classes, interfaces or any other files and if we group them into a single package, even package is an encapsulated entity. It doesn't end just there itself. Similarly, if you have a group of packages or a set of classes, interfaces combined together, which might create you an encapsulated entity, which might be called as a component or module or even a project. The final goal for encapsulation is to make an entity more safe and secure and provide access only for the necessary items. Outside world should not know what is happening inside this encapsulated entity. Now, let's discuss a little bit more about the class and uh, how we can actually make this uh, entity secure. As we already discussed, class is a combination of state and behavior or variables and methods. So what do you mean by state? Let's see a little bit more. State is something where we store the data. To store the data, we can use variables or objects. And when we actually say about variables and objects, these are nothing but a simple way of referencing to the memory, which means the variable is just a easier name to remember, which can be referring to a memory location. So it is storing some data in the memory. Now, since this is a direct access to the memory, we should make it private. If we don't keep our state variables private, our outside members can actually access them directly and they can modify the values with invalid data and that might create a trouble for your entity. So in order to avoid that, we have to keep our properties or variables private. Now, if the state is actually private, then how are we going to modify the data? Like data modification is one of the key point when we work with software development, right? So how do we do that? That is the responsibility of the behavior. Every class or every encapsulated entity has a behavior modules also. So when you have this behavior, they should have access to the state. They should be able to modify it or they should be able to read it. That is the main purpose of the behavior. And for behavior, usually we use methods. Like every class will have either variables or methods, right? And they can modify the state. And only they should be able to modify the state. Like outside members should never be able to modify the state of a particular class directly. And these behavior methods, like methods or functions, we can keep them public or protected or default only when it is necessary. We have to restrict the access so that only the specific people or a specific entities can access them when it is necessary. If you follow all these things, then class becomes more stable and strong. 
Now, let us see like what are the different types of class uh, objects that we can actually create. So first thing is data structures, which is like where we can actually hold some data. In a way, we can say that these are more like plain old Java objects or we can call even model classes where we are just using this to transfer the data from one point to the other point. When you are making an API call or when you are saving something into the DB, these are the places where we are using this kind of data structures. This should absolutely not have any business logic. Adding to that data structure, you can have variables which can be modified internally within the class. From outside, you should be able to access them only using getter and setter methods. You should not make the variables directly public or protected. This is one of the key thing when you are using uh, model classes or POJO classes. Now let's see what is the other type of normal regular objects which will have certain state and behavior and the state can be handled only uh, modified by only the behavior. And this is the point where we actually try to avoid having getters and setters. Even Uncle Bob actually uh, specifies this very very clearly. You should not give a getter setter method directly until it is a data structure. When it comes to regular uh, objects where the business logic actually plays a key role. So here we are going to give a proper naming convention which is exposed to the outside world. We should not just give a get uh, method or set method directly. We will see some examples and we'll get to know why exactly that is important. Let us take a small example which is a data structure for a person. And here we have some variables which are name, address, weight, height and ID number. And you can see the hyphens which means these variables are private. So no one from outside the class can access these variables. That is a good thing. Now when you see the behavior we have all the get and set methods for these variables. Now these uh, methods can be exposed outside. People whoever want to access these variables or access this data they have to access it only through the getters and setter methods. If you see the same object as a regular object where we have some business logic, it's not just only a model class, then we have the same variables which are private, but we don't have getter and setters here. We are having a proper behavioral methods which describes what exactly it is doing. And internally, it can actually make some changes on the state of that particular entity. For example, if you see each food, whenever eat method is executed, there are certain variables that might get affected. Name, there won't be any change when it happens. Address, there won't be any change. Weight, there will be a, a slight change that will happen. Height, it won't change immediately. Similar identification number, there won't be any change. And if you see similarly, like the other behaviors also, every behavior has certain impact on some states. So this is how we should be exposing the methods to outside world. We should not let others know what variable names do you have and what is the data type uh, of these variables and more. We should just let the outside world know what is necessary to communicate with us. Let's take another example. If you see here, we have a bank account. If it is a data structure, model class, you have like person, account number, home branch, current balance, currency, and you have all the getter and setter methods. But if you are using it as a business object, then on the right side, you can see we have same variables which are private, but coming to the methods, we have the method names clearly mentioning what exactly it will be doing. Uh, it is not mentioning that what kind of information it is storing internally. It is not sharing even the variable names in the method names. If you see get account holder, this is a common thing which many uh, banks have to provide a kind of API or something. So you can use get account holder, which will return a person object. And second one, if you want to update your account details, you can call update account holder. Using this method, no one knows that we are actually storing that variable as a person, what kind of structure uh, we are actually using inside the person. And get account number, which gives you just account number and which is a common uh, thing for us. But whether we are storing it as an account number or account NO or anything, that is up to us. We are, uh, there is no restriction on those kind of things. Similarly, we have a lot of other things related to home branch and more. And now when you come to current balance, this is a key point for a bank account. To get a current current balance, you can call get current balance method, which is straightforward and which will give you the amount. In case if you want to reduce the amount in your current balance or if you want to do some transaction, if you want to withdraw something, 
you are not going to call set current balance with the updated value you are going to call a method which is called withdraw with a proper amount passing inside it and inside uh, this object how you are actually updating that value no one knows from outside the class similarly if you want to add some money if you want to uh, update the current balance you have to call deposit you are not calling set current balance again even a company's head should not be able to modify the object state directly they should be able to follow a proper procedure and steps to make any changes in the state when you actually follow these kind of rules uh, while creating objects and all then your object stays very very safe and secure like no one from outside world will know how it is being implemented or how the data is actually being stored in the back end. when you actually discuss about this you can say that like we are hiding the data and also we are using abstraction here so encapsulation uh, is actually a combination of hiding the data as well as an abstraction if you combine these two things then the security level will be at a next level so this is how encapsulation actually saves you from securing your object and as we discussed it is not only for a class the same rules apply for a package or a module or even a, pro a project also when you are working in a package that package should provide access uh, to other packages uh, with only necessary information it should not uh, just keep everything as public or default so if we follow these kind of structures then the dependency will be very very less between the packages or different modules and the architecture becomes like very very good so this way we can make the software more scalable and easy to maintain let us do a summary first of all encapsulation it is grouping related items into a single entity and for example if class is an encapsulated entity which is a combination of state and behavior or you can also call it as variables and methods similarly class package module project all these are encapsulated entities only next objects are safe only when we hide the internal information using private others outside the uh, class no one should be able to identify what is the variable name or how are we storing that data and nothing they should be able to access only through methods and that too with a meaningful names use non private access specifics only when needed do not provide it for everything data structures can use getters and setter methods but like in case if you don't want to allow certain methods to uh, be called on the data structures just better to remove it do not generate getter and setter for all the variables for regular business objects avoid getter and setter methods so that we can hide the internal variable names instead of getter and setter use proper method names to expose the actions or the use cases we don't need to expose the variable names we have to expose the behavior that it is actually doing so this is all about the encapsulation guys i hope everyone understood about encapsulation and how you can use encapsulation at a project level or package level or from high level to low level so that you can make your project more scalable and secure if you have any questions about encapsulation please do comment thank you guys